recap. A recap of the shows that we've actually uh, done this week, the interviews that, uh, that I've had with different medical doctors. I'm going to give you my opinion uh, based on uh, the research that I've done over the years. You know, for those of you that are, that are new to my program, I have interviewed now thousands of medical doctors, dentists, all over the country. In fact, uh, 13 years ago started my program, the Wellness Hour. We've actually recorded 1,056 30-minute episodes, and we added it up one time, and I've spent at least, because there's preparation prior to the interview, but I've spent approximately 7,000 hours listening to doctors explain themselves. And I was telling a friend of mine, you can't help but learn a, a, a few things. So, uh, of course, I've gained some opinions, and I try not to put my opinions on the show, but today uh, we're going to do that. Now, I have my laptop right here because I'm going to be accept if you want to send me a message on Facebook because we're live on Facebook. If, one of, if, if you want someone else to tune into this because it's a hot topic today, uh, they could go to randyalvarez.tv, randyalvarez.tv, and they could see it. They don't have to be one of my friends. So this week we talked about this new thing that's... Uh, a new hot topic for minimally invasive facial rejuvenation. It's called the Vampire Lift. The Vampire Lift. And when I heard about this, by the way, I thought this is really uh, a gimmicky, uh, kind of, uh, well, gimmicky, kind of BS, you know, just another way to get the surgeons to, to come in. But, but I will tell you something. They call it a Vampire Lift, uh, but because there's blood involved, your own blood with stem cells. And so, I'm going to give you my opinion. So this week, I interviewed two medical doctors. One is a, uh, a board-certified facial plastic surgeon from UCLA, Dr. Gregory Keller. He's been using platelet-rich plasma in people's faces for several years to make them look younger. And I also had Newport Beach cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Thomas Barnes, this week, talking about the benefits of platelet-rich plasma. So it's called PRP. Uh, some guys are advertising it as the vampire lift. I don't know if it's a lift or not, but it definitely helps with the healing process. So platelet-rich plasma, L let me tell you the basic application. Okay, so when you go to the medical doctor, when you go to the dermatologist, what's happening is that you go in, and let's say we're talking about laser therapy, or we're talking about fractionated lasers, intense pulse lights, uh, different heating things, now they have ultrasound, things that uh, dot lasers, pixel lasers, that heat the underlying tissues or heat your skin and force the body to lay down new collagen. The other thing it does, it seems to do, is tighten the pores and uh, give you a glowing uh, appearance. Now there's two types of, of things. There's intense pulse light. This is light that penetrates the skin, targets reds, and browns because as you get older the dead giveaway for your age is you get unevenness of color when you look at an 18 year old their skin is pretty much all the same color well as you get older and, and this is a big topic you know because of hormones because of uh, sun damage because of pigment because of a lot of different things uh, your skin starts to get different colors they come to the surface intense pulse light treatments are great for this red and browns it's heating the underlying tissue. One of the side effects, your body produces more collagen, tightens the pores in certain cases. Number two, though, is the more aggressive CO2 lasers, fractionated lasers, pixel lasers. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, what we've learned this week, is that these procedures, you go in, okay, and they, they zap your face, okay, with these pixels, so they're, they, they, it's, it's different, they, they leave space in between the, the zapping that's what a fractionated laser is, so that way your body can rebuild and heal in between the pixels. Okay, I'm not doing the best probably expa explaining this at the moment, but it's a really effective treatment for this kind of a thing. So this week, uh, because this, these, these procedures, fractionated laser treatments, are happening all over the country, great for sun damage, great for wrinkling skin, great for tightening of the skin as well, another side effect, okay? but. PRP, platelet-rich plasma. So you do your treatment, okay? There's usually about a three-day downtime, uh, depending on how aggressive they get. If they get really aggressive, you look like you have a burned face, you feel like you have a burned face, you could return to work with makeup the next day, the day after. But when they do these aggressive treatments, it takes about three or four days, and the next day you look terrible, okay? Now, platelet-rich plasma comes along. 
Okay, now this is a big topic, a stem cell topic. But with the stem cells, what they're doing is they take your own blood, they spin it, in this, uh, and they have to be set up for this, and what they do, it, it turns white. It's a white substance, and we won't get into the details of what that is, but it's filled with some stem cells, adult stem cells. They take about four vials, and they inject it. This is after you've had your fractionated laser, your pixelated laser, even your intense pulse light, any of your tr uh, skin treatments. Okay, so they've heated the underlying tissues. Now your body has to heal itself, because really what's going on is these lasers are creating a burn. And so when you get a burn, your body has to heal itself. Okay, that's why when you see somebody that's had a really bad burn, and I'm talking about a third degree burn over their body, there's no wrinkles. They can't wrinkle, it's complete scar tissue. Well, when you burn the face with a light burn, you force the body to struggle to heal itself. And in that process, it lays down new collagen. Okay, so we, that's, what, that's what's going on. That's why they look younger. Because they get because when you're 18 years old, by the way, or when you're 16 years old and you laugh and you're smiling and you're in the sun and you don't wear sunblock, you notice 16 year olds don't get wrinkles, no matter how much sun damage they have, or no matter how much smiling they get. Why? Because when you're 16, 17 years old, your body is rebuilding more than it's breaking down. Then you get to about 25, 30, depending on your health and depending on your lifestyle. You get to about 30 years old, and what happens is you're breaking down more than you're rebuilding. Now you get the wrinkles, okay? So with these heat technology, whether it's ultrasound, whether it's um, IPL, CO2 laser, fractionated laser, pixel laser, uh, all of these type of lasers, heats the tissue, your body now has to, it, you're like when you were 16 years old, you're producing collagen again. That's why these treatments are fabulous. But then comes along platelet-rich plasma. So after the treatment, they go in and they inject in different sites on your face, okay? Now, I've had a few intense pulse light treatments, a few fractionated laser treatments, nothing deep where I was completely peeled off, but I know the downtime and I know my skin, okay? So one of the doctors uh, over at UCLA, Gregory Keller, I'm over there visiting because my son is a film student in Ventura at Brooks Institute, and, and, and one of the things was, he says, Randy, you gotta come in and try this PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Okay, and I said, well, I'm taping on Monday, so I can't do it. He goes, with platelet-rich plasma, I'm telling you, it's going to speed up the healing time. Okay, so I go in, get my pixelated laser all over my face, uh, which didn't hurt, but uh, afterwards felt like a really bad sunburn, okay? Then I go into the other room, and the doctor injects, in this case, it was a registered nurse, injects, my own blood that was spun, turned white, into my face. And uh, amazing. So then what, what ended up happening was, by the way, is the very next day, what normally would have been a disaster, I mean, just you know, beet red and, and dark brown marks all over my face, it was absolutely, just it was light. The next day, gone. And then today, here we are, it was done just two, two and a half, three days ago, and, and I'm ready to go. What's happening is with this platelet-rich plasma, you're going to hear a lot about it. I guarantee PRP, stem cell, is they're going to take your blood. They're going to get more aggressive with the underlying tissues. So in the old days, well, currently, Restylane, Juvederm, depending on who you talk to, you know, Restylane, Juvederm, under your eyes or in the folds, okay, or Sculptra. What they're doing now, and this is what, like Gregory Keller is telling me, and Tom Barnes from uh, Newport Beach, is you go in and they will inject your own blood, your own stem cells, and you will get that rebuilding effect without the fillers. It's, it's interesting stuff. So PRP, you're gonna hear a lot about it, trust me. PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Now, I, I wanna tell you some other uses. So the, the number one hair transplant guy in uh, uh, almost the nation is Dr. DeYarman, and I spoke to him. And he's one of the only guys, there's probably five guys, I could be off on this, in the world, or in, in the U.S., that when they do the hair transplant, injecting platelet-rich plasma. There are orthopedic surgeons, sports medicine physicians. You got a knee problem, they, they, they put in, they inject in this platelet-rich plasma to speed up the healing. They're saying in the NBA, in the NFL, this is old news to them. They've been doing this for years. They've been using it with great results. 
So then came along in Europe, these European guys that don't have the FDA, they don't have the kind of rules we have, they started injecting it into the face for cosmetic reasons, and it's turning out to be a fantastic thing, something worth looking at. Anyway, by the way, we're taking your questions right here. That's what my laptop's for. This is a live show. This is not being taped. And if you want to see this later, I'll have this, by the way, on YouTube. Uh, and also have it on randyalvarez.tv if you want to take a look at there. I'll also put it on my wellnesshour.com. So DeYarmin, these men, now, now then, when you get a hair transplant, uh, and I haven't had a hair transplant, by the way, that when you get one, they get red scabs. And so the doctors know about you know, 10 days, 20 days to get these scabs. According to Dr. DeYarmin, he says about 30% less scabbing, 30 to 40% faster healing time injecting it into the head. And he says, if you're going to get your hair restored, get PRP. Now, doctors are charging anywhere from 600 to about 1,000 for this PRP technique. And, and again, using your own stem cells, your own body, injecting it into the site to promote healing. So it's a combination, the way I see it, it's a combination theory, or I'm sorry, combination procedure. That means I, I couldn't imagine going in and just getting PRP by itself, uh, but people are doing it. I would want to get my fractionated laser first, pixel laser, uh, an intense pulse light or one of these ultrasound uh, devices to heat the underlying skin and then get the PRP with it. Now in LA, I'm, I'm watching television uh, and, and I'm flipping through channels, okay, and I see they called it a vampire lift, like I said at the beginning of the show. By the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is our live show, so you can send me a question right here live. We're talking about platelet-rich plasma injected in your face. I see that we're picking up people not only on Facebook, but on Ustream. So they heat the underlying tissue. They inject with a needle your own blood after it's spun. The stem cells are there, and they help heal the process. But in L.A., I'm watching TV. One doctor showed a before and after, kind of a haggard-looking 55-year-old woman. And she had, you know, the typical stuff, a little bit sunken in here, over here, kind of sunken in. This guy injected about 40 different sites, numbed her face. This plastic surgeon injected her all over her face and literally noticeably, was th this woman looked years younger. She looked refreshed. She didn't look tired. Now, of course, there's an inflammatory response. So there's an illusion. So the first day, you're going to be puffed out a little bit and fill in those creases. So the big question is, what does that woman look like 30 days, 60 days? The doctors I talk to, and I'm telling you, I have inside scoop. I talk to medical doctors, plastic surgeons from all over the country, from New York, from here in, uh, in, in California, Beverly Hills, university physicians. There's things that they will tell me. They say, well, I wouldn't say this on your show, Randy, but, and what they're telling me is that platelet-rich plasma is sizzling hot. So you gotta get it done. Uh, it's, it, it's my pick of the week. Look for a doctor that does it. There's two that I know of that are really aggressive with it. And, and there's a, a learning curve, which is a, a doctor, uh, uh, a doctor uh, Gregory Keller. He has a Beverly Hills office and Santa Barbara. And then uh, Thomas Barnes, he's in Newport Beach. He's doing a lot of it. In fact, this guy lives, eats, and breathes platelet-rich plasma. He can't stop talking about it. Went to dinner with him after uh, my interview with him last week, and, and, and that's all he talked about the whole time. So it, it is hot. Okay, next, let's talk a little bit about your skin and nutrition. This is our live show. If you have a question, come in. I'm gonna, this is my new weekly recap show. These are people that I, I'm going to share with you what I've learned all this week from the di different medical doctors uh, that we've had on the show. One of the people we had on the show was Dr. Lori Arnold, Dr. Arnold. Now, one of the things with Dr. Lori, we call her America's pharmacist, she's a PharmD, and she talked about skin care and nutrition. She, her, her big thing this week, and I agree with her, she says, Randy, the, my biggest gripe, and I'm paraphrasing, is that dermatologists across the country, they have these great lasers, they take care of sun damage and spots and, and this and that, and they tell you about sunblock and they get rid of skin cancers. But here's her thing. Nobody, she said nobody, except for this one expert she talked to, was interested in what she was eating every single day. Okay, so here she was. Dr. Dr. Arnold told me this story. She says, okay, so she's 36 years old for three solid years because of hormones, because of whatever, whatever the excuse was, 
she had acne, cystic acne, all over her face. Clusters here, clusters there. I met her first time she was on my show a year ago. And in my mind, I'm going, you know, nice gal, attractive woman, but some serious acne. Well, it turned out, and then I ran into her at an anti-aging conference, it turned out after the, one of the breaks, she comes up to me and she says, you know, Randy, I've never made the connection between nutrition and my face. She's eating candy, Mentos is one of them, M&Ms, but a little bit of candy every day. She says also, she goes, Randy, I think I have a food allergy because she's attending these courses at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. So here's what she did. She met a medical doctor that said, look, if you get off your gluten, wheat, get off your dairy, okay, cut your refined sugar, you can still have fruit and you can still have vegetables and you can still have lean proteins and good oils and multivitamins and things like that. But if you just get rid of those things that you may have allergies to or developed allergies to, your skin will clear up. This is what this doctor told her, okay, well-known doctor. So sure enough, that's what she did. She did it cold turkey. Her, her skin started clearing up. I see her two months later, she ends up saying, Randy, I go, what'd you do? Looks like you've lasered your face, you have great skin. She says, I, I found out I had some food allergies. Got rid of dairy, got rid of gluten, and she did some other things. She had, she had one of those acne treatments one time or two times where they zapped, they killed the acne, and she got a fresh start, then she started eating better. And so there are some medical doctors, by the way, so I talked to some medical doctors about this particular topic, like Dr. Pamela Smith, uh, doctors from all over the country, and what they're saying is this, there's a toxic burden that women and men go through, and uh, there's a toxic load, okay? So you're eating bad food, you're not sleeping enough, you're having your MSG, you're having your artificial sweeteners, you're, you, you have all of these things, you have heavy metals in your body. Well, one day, your body can't detox through urine, through bowel movements, through sweat, and now it's gotta come through the skin. So your skin, this, this inflammation, shows up on your skin. In fact, I had a medical doctor that told me you could look at a person's skin and you could determine how healthy they are. You could look at the whites of their eyes. If somebody's healthy, great skin, the whites of their eyes are great. Also look at their gums. Their gums are healthy as well, okay? So, this week, Dr. Arnold pointed out, look, what goes in your mouth is going to show up on your face, okay? So if you eat foods that clog you, they're going to be clogging on your face, but if you eat foods that cleanse you, then you won't have this kind of a problem. One thing I have to agree, and I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian or a raw food expert. I do have some morning shakes and things like that that are raw food, put them in a blender. And uh, what I would say is, of all the vegans I've met, the one thing that, that they have is great skin because they're not toxic, okay? So if you are a woman and you all of a sudden have a, a, an acne problem that you didn't used to have, you may want to get rid of cheese, dairy, and gluten, and uh, other things. Now, skin care, one of the things Dr. Lori Arnold said this week on the show, very interesting, alpha lipoic acid, the old, one, of the, one of the best antioxidants you could take, alpha lipoic acid, uh, get it in a capsule form, four to 600 milligrams a day, has to be taken with a fatty meal, even though it's, uh, it's water soluble and fat soluble, but they want you to take it with a fatty meal, and that's 400 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid. All the dermatologists agree, this is the hot one. That's why you see alpha lipoic acid now in the skin creams and the topicals, get that. Number two, get a good fish oil, high triglyceride form, get a good fish oil. I wouldn't recommend the ones you, you, you find at uh, Trader Joe's. Krill oil is fantastic, uh, you wanna do that. Also, take some vitamin D, get a good multivitamin, high B vitamins, because in our stressful uh, atmosphere, B vitamins are depleted. So for skin, as we know, alpha lipoic, high level vitamin C, a good multivitamin, B vitamins, and eat right, tons of water, and uh, maybe a little red wine. Some, some guys say, look, you know, uh, two glasses of red wine with the resveratrol in it. Pinot Noir, by the way, has the highest uh, resveratrol content. Uh, and, and, and there's lots of health benefits. So I think, you know, that's our recap for the week. Oh, one last one, dental implants. I want to talk about dental implants this week. We had, uh, we spoke to Dr. Hunegaard about dental implants, who's a candidate. And I, and I learned a few things this week. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is our live show, if you're just tuning in, by the way. Uh, if you have a question, send me a question right here. 
It, it doesn't have to be about dental implants. See if you could stump me. Look, I, I've been spending 8,000 hours listening to medical doctors. I've learned a few things. I'm also more confused than ever, so I don't pretend to know all, all the different things. But dental implants, okay. So denture wear is out there, according to this Dr. Hunegard, and I've interviewed a lot of dentists on my show. But he says there are denture wearers everywhere. Thousands, 20 million Americans are wearing dentures. These denture wearers aren't really chewing, it turns out. So if you have a grandmother, a mother that wears dentures, they're kind of just, they're not, you know, it's like the way the cows chew. Have you ever seen a cow chew? And, uh, and what happens is, you know, there's no teeth in your stomach, somebody told me a, a while back. So you got to chew your food before it goes down. If you don't chew your food, you get some digestive problems, you get gassy, you get excess weight gain. That's a whole other story. But denture wearers out there have problems. And so there's no such thing, they say, as a happy denture wearer. Because denture wearers have to wear adhesive. Denture wearers live a bit of a, of a secret life, according to Dr. Hunegard. What he says is, Randy, they go out to dinner and they're laughing or they're eating and they say, I have to go use the restroom. When in fact, they may have an irritating seed underneath their gum. So they go to the restroom, they come back. Or at night, okay, because they're in a relationship, they can't sleep with their teeth in a jar. So they're sleeping with their dentures in. It's very uncomfortable. They feel very self-conscious kissing. This is what, what he tells me. So in the world of dental implants, here's the beautiful thing. If you have a loved one, two dental implants, that's all you need. Two for a denture wear, right here. And now you get a snap in. And by the way, I've, seen, I've met these people. Snug, snap in, snap out uh, uh, for the denture wear. Turns out 90-year-olds are getting dental implants and they're not falling out. The biggest, and my father, and that's why you know I'm talking to Dr. Hunegard this week, my father just got two dental implants in his lower. His biggest is 76 year old, and this guy is a 76 year old stud, my father. Great genetics. I mean, the, the, he just, he's 76, he's, he's in shape. He talks a little bit too much because of his hearing, he has to overcompensate, but that's another story. But the thing is, with dental implants for this, this guy, my father, is goes in and gets two implants. He admits to me after the fact, he goes, Randy, I was so scared. He goes, I don't want to tell you, but I was scared. He goes, it didn't hurt at all. See, the bone, it's like clipping your fingernails or cutting your hair. There's no, there's no feeling there. So when they put the implants in the bone, you don't feel it. The only time you feel it is the gums. Now, in the old days, it was more of a blind procedure. They had to really cut open the gums. This is my understanding. They had to cut open the gums more. And because of the gums, the gums are what hurt. It wasn't, and then you may have an infection, et cetera. Nowadays, in fact, they have these surgical guides where even I could do dental implants. Now, if, if, if one of the people, by the way, if you're just tuning in, we just pick up a new viewer. This is my live recap show where I talk about what I learned all week from the different doctors that were on the show. We're right now talking about Dr. Hunegard uh, about dental implants. So my father got dental implants, said it didn't hurt. In fact, ibuprofen or Motrin or Advil or whatever they're giving them, uh, I guess you don't want to take aspirin because of the bleeding, but my father said it didn't hurt at all. And because of imaging now, they just poke a couple holes with a surgical guide, and, uh, and there you go. And in literally about three appointments, all of these denture wearers wearing the adhesive now can have something that snaps in and snaps out. Another great line I learned from Dr. John Willardson, he said, Randy, for, and by the way, we all know a denture wearer, our, our mother, our grandfather, et cetera. And they don't complain about dentures because this is a personal thing. But two dental implants, and that's not a lot of money, two dental implants, their whole life changes. They could eat corn on the cob, they could eat apples, they could eat whatever. And you're never too old for dental implants. I heard another guy say this, that it, Randy, if they're healthy enough to walk into my office, they're usually a candidate for dental implants. Now, if you're under cancer, uh, cancer therapy, or if you have like chemo, or if you have absolutely uncontrolled uh, diabetes, uh, not a candidate, but for the most part, it's about eating, it's about chewing, it's about self-esteem, and and these and you know what the, the doctor told me he said, Randy, one thing about these these uh, like my father who's 76 years old, he said, you know, he wants a date. I mean, he's on Match. No, he's not on Match.com, but he's you know he's trying to date. He's 76 years old. Um, had a couple of failed ma marriages. He said they were it was all their fault, but he's dating, and he says, you know, when you have dentures, it is very uncomfortable. So his goal now because he's got the lower, is to get the upper as well. Because these, and, and by the way, your grandmother, your mother, if you have dental, if you have dentures, the roof of your mouth is covered with these, with these uh, dentures. Tasting wine, tasting good food, very tough. That soft palate is very important for tasting. So the tip of the week is, if you've got a friend or a loved one that, that uh, has a denture, make them 
go to my website and, uh, and, and, and watch one of the dental implant shows because nowadays it's pretty inexpensive to get two dental implants and change your life. And for those of you, and I'm gonna do one last little thing, this is what Dr. Hunegaard says. He says, Randy, if somebody, he goes, because I look at your Facebook friends, you got a bunch of young people, but if you're missing just one tooth in the back, or maybe two teeth, you're headed for disaster according to these dentists. Because if you're missing one or two teeth, now, you know, the science is mixed on this, but because you're missing the teeth, the bone starts to go away. The mouth starts to shift. Of the 20 million Americans that have upper or lower dentures, guess what? It all starts with one tooth. So what happens is you get one infective tooth, infected tooth, the periodontal disease that's under there, by the way, seems to spread, or because you have a bridge or a partial, and bridge and partials I think are only supposed to last about 10 or 15 years, so it's complete patchwork dentistry. I'm quoting other doctors, by the way. Doctors say, Randy, dentistry was set up, we're filling holes, we're patching things up. To quote a, a Kicken, an oral surgeon from Santa Barbara, Dr. Kicken said, Randy, let me get religious on your show. God invented, or God made it so you lose your teeth. But then God came along and invented dental implants and you get to get your teeth back. And that's, and that's the simplicity. So if you have one missing tooth, they say rather than carving down two adjacent teeth and having some bridge put on, go in, get a dental implant, get your teeth back. Anyway, I, I, that's, that's the recap for this week. Have a, look, it's a big holiday weekend today, or this weekend. Uh, don't drink too much, get plenty of rest, eat organic. I'm kidding around, by the way. Might as well live it up this weekend. That's this week's uh, recap. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll see you next week.